In this tutorial, you will learn how to model a complex part based on a technical drawing, in Blender. This is the final result. This drawing was downloaded from GrabCAD.com. The part is fairly tricky, and poses a number of challenges. In particular it has numerous joints between straight and cylindrical surfaces, and also between cylindrical, and other cylindrical surfaces. We will model this part in three steps. Step number one, model the flat outline corresponding to this top view drawing. Step number two, cover the outline with several large faces, as follows. Step number three, perform a number of extrusions to arrive at the final 3D model. We will conceptually represent this part as three circles. We will designate the center circle as circle number one. Its center will coincide with the origin. We will designate the left circle as circle number two, and right one as circle number three. Before we can start modeling this part, we need to solve two geometry problems. Problem number one. Given two circles with known radii and distance between their centers, find a line that is tangent to both circles. From these constructions, it follows that the endpoints of this line are obtained by rotating the top points of both circles by the angle alpha, calculated as the arcsine of big R, minus little r, divided by d. Let's test this formula in Blender. Let circle 1 be of radius 1, circle 2 of radius 2, and their distance, 4. We can use Google to compute the angle, just type the formula and add, in degrees. Copy the result to the clipboard. Select the first circle. Press tab for the edit mode. Select the very top vertex. Press shift D to duplicate, R for rotate, Z, control V to rotate by the angle in the clipboard, then enter. We want to mark this vertex, so that we can find it quickly later. Extrude it upwards by pressing E, Y, then enter. The newly created vertex is not currently connected to the rest of the circle. Select the two vertices to the left and right of our new vertex, press X and delete the edge. Now create two new edges from our new vertex to its left and right neighbors on the circle by pressing F. Repeat the same procedure for the bottom vertex. Press tab to exit the edit mode. Select the second circle. Press shift S and select cursor to select it. Do the same with this circle's top and bottom vertices. Select both circles, and press Ctrl J to join them together. In the edit mode, connect the marked vertices on top and bottom by pressing F. Delete the markers. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. The tangent lines are looking good. This technique will be used in this tutorial twice. Problem number two, the technical drawing does not give us the distance between the centers of circle number one and circle number three, nor does it provide the angle between the horizontal line and the line connecting the centers of these circles. Instead, we are given a distance and angle for a point to the right of the center of circle number one. To find the distance and angle, we need to solve this triangle. We will use an online triangle solving calculator, such as calculator.net.
The distance between the centers of circle number 1 and circle number 3 is 140.449, and the angle beta is 44.646 degrees. We now have all the pieces we need. Let's start modeling. Delete the default cube, camera and light by pressing A, and then Axe. Press 7 on the numeric keypad to switch to the top view, and 5 to switch to the orthographic mode. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point. In the scene properties on the right-hand side, expand units, and select millimeters for length. According to the drawing, circle number 1 has the diameter of 100, or radius 50. All our circles will have 128 vertices. Press Shift A, and add a circle. Enter 128 for the number of vertices, and 50 for radius. Let's also create circle number 2 with the radius of 30. Move it to the left by 110 by pressing G, X, negative 110, then enter. Press Shift S, and select cursor to select it. Press Tab to enter the edit mode. Add the inner part of the circle with the radius of 15. Let's calculate the angle for the tangent lines for circles number 1 and 2. Copy the value to the clipboard. On circle number 2, locate and highlight the top vertex. Press Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, Z, Control V, then enter. Extrude upwards to mark it clearly. Integrate it into the circle geometry. Do the same with the bottom vertex. This time, rotate in the opposite direction by pressing Shift D, R, Z, minus, Control V, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Select circle number 1. Press Shift S, then cursor to select it. Enter the edit mode. Perform the same operations to its top and bottom vertices. Exit the edit mode. Select both objects, and press Ctrl J to join them. In the edit mode, connect the marked vertices by pressing F. Exit the edit mode. Now let's model circle number 3. We will model it on the x-axis first, and then rotate it into position. Add a circle of the radius 25. Enter the edit mode. Add another circle with the radius 10.5. Select everything, and move to the right by the distance calculated earlier, which is 140.449. Calculate the tangent angle the same way as before. Copy the value to the clipboard. Select everything. Press Shift-S, and select cursor to select it. Locate the top vertex. 
duplicate it, rotate it, mark it via extrusion, and integrate it into the circle geometry. Do the same with the bottom vertex. Exit the edit mode. Go back to circle number 1. Return the 3D cursor to the origin by pressing Shift C. Enter the edit mode. Do the same routine with the top and bottom vertices but this time, do not integrate them to the geometry, as we will need to rotate them later. Join everything together by pressing Ctrl J. Create the tangent edges. Highlight circle number 3, and then press Ctrl plus, a few times, to also highlight the tangent edges and markers. Rotate by the angle calculated earlier, which is 44.646 degrees, by pressing R, Z, 44.646, then enter. Now integrate the two marked vertices into the geometry of circle number 1 the same way as before. Exit the edit mode. You may have noticed that we now have intersecting lines right here, which we must fix. In fact, according to the drawing, this intersection has to be smoothed out with a curve with a radius of 12. Rotate everything until the intersection point lies precisely on the y-axis. Enter the edit mode. Add a circle with a radius of 12. Move it up until it touches both tangent lines, by pressing G and Y. Get rid of most of the circle's vertices starting from the top, until only a small segment connecting the two tangent lines is left. Highlight one of the tangent lines, right-click, and select Subdivide from the pop-up menu. Highlight the new vertex. Press G twice and slide it down the line until it is in close proximity to the end of the curve. Select the two vertices, press M for Merge, and select, at last. In older versions of Blender, this shortcut used to be Alt-M. This section of the line and the marker can now be safely deleted. Do the same with the second tangent line.
Exit the edit mode. To return the model to its original position, go to Object Properties and put 0 in the Z box under Rotation. Our overall outline is finished and it is a good time to save our work. Next, we will model the outlines for these two inner recesses. Their contours are made up of straight line segments and circular arcs joined together. Notice that the straight line segments are parallel to the tangent lines we modeled earlier. According to the drawing, they should be 10 mm apart. To model those straight line segments, we need to rotate the model a bit. Recall the angle we calculated to model the first tangent line. If we rotate the model by this angle around the z-axis, the bottom tangent line becomes parallel to the x-axis. Enter the edit mode. Switch to the edge select mode. Select the bottom edge. Duplicate it and move it up by 10 by pressing Shift D, Y, 10, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Return the model to the original position by entering 0 in the z-box. To create a mirror image of this edge, enter the edit mode, select the edge, press Shift D, S for scale, Y, negative 1, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Now we need to put circle number 3 on the x-axis. Rotate the model by the angle we computed for our triangle solution problem, which is 44.646 degrees, but in the opposite direction, by pressing R, Z, negative 44.646, then enter. Recall the angle we used for the second tangent line. Rotate the model by this angle. Enter the edit mode. Select the top edge. Duplicate and move it down by 10. Exit the edit mode. Rotate by the same angle in the opposite direction. Enter the edit mode and create a mirror of this edge by pressing Shift D, S for scale, Y, minus 1, then enter. Exit the edit mode. Return the model to the original position by entering 0 in the Z box. Now, let's model the rounded corners for the recesses. According to the drawing, all the rounded corners have the radius of 5. Enter the edit mode and switch to the vertex select mode. Add a circle with the radius of 5. Move it to the left by 55. Rotate until it touches the slanted edge we modeled in the previous step. Zoom in as much as possible. Make incremental adjustments as necessary. While rotating with the mouse, hold down the shift key for better precision. Duplicate the circle, and rotate it until it touches the bottom edge. Continue until all eight corner circles are modeled and positioned. We now need to weld these circles to the existing geometry. The proverbial welding will be done via subdividing, sliding, and merging. Select a slanted edge. Right-click and select, subdivide. Enter 2 for the number of cuts, as this edge will be welded with two circles. Zoom in on the left circle. Select the newly created vertex closest to it, press G twice, and slide it towards the point of contact between the circle and edge. Select both vertices and merge them together by pressing M. Mark the welding joint via extrusion. These markers will become very handy later. Welding to the larger circle is performed the same way, by subdividing the adjacent edge of the bigger circle, sliding, and merging.
Don't forget to mark this welding joint via extrusion. Now we need to remove all extra vertices from the circles, and leave only the arcs between the markers. Select a vertex on the circle roughly equidistant from the markers, and press Ctrl plus, until all vertices up to, but not including, the marked vertices, are highlighted. Then delete them. Also delete the endpoints of the slanted edges. Next, we will model the contour inside circle number 1. It is comprised of 5 arcs, and 1 straight line. Make sure the 3D cursor is in the origin by pressing Shift-C. To model the straight line, add a plane, and merge it at center, to obtain a single vertex. Move it to the right, then extrude to the left. Highlight the entire edge, and move it up by 5. Add a circle with the radius of 40. Add a circle with the radius of 5, and move it up by 10. Move it to the left, until it touches the bigger circle. Perform the welding operation by subdividing, sliding, and merging. Create a marker via extrusion. Weld the circle to the straight line. Delete the left endpoint of the straight line. 
Move the 3D cursor by 20 to the right. Press N for the side panel, and enter 20 in the Xbox. Add a circle with the radius of 25. Add another circle with the radius of 5, and move it to the left by 30. Rotate it until it touches the outer circle. Create another small circle, move it to the left by 30, and rotate it until it touches the straight line from above. Perform the welding operations for both circles. Remove all extra vertices from all the circles involved. Now, select the entire contour, and create its mirror image by pressing Shift D, S, Y, minus 1, then Enter. Next, some easy modeling, a round recess with 7 round holes around its center. Create a circle with the radius of 22. Create another circle with the radius of 4. Move it to the left by 15. There are 7 of these. To calculate the angle of rotation, divide 360 by 7. Copy the value to the clipboard. Press Shift D to duplicate, R, Z, Control V, then Enter. Press Shift R 5 times, to create 5 more circles. Our flat contour is done. Next, we will tile our geometry with faces. This step is the longest, and requires the most focus. It is completely up to you how many faces you want to create, and over which vertices. The important thing is, that no vertex is left without a face, and there are no face overlaps. The markers we have created over all our welding joints, will help us greatly. Press Z, and select wireframe. Most of our modeling in this step will be performed in the wireframe mode. Press tab to enter the edit mode. Highlight this circle, and the seven inner circles, and press Alt F for beauty fill. We will split circle number two into two halves by creating these edges. Select the bottom half of circle number 2. Now carefully deselect all those vertices we selected inadvertently, including markers. Press F to create a face. A face over the other half of circle number 2 is created in a similar way.
We will merge these pairs of markers to create a rectangular face here. Let's also create these edges here. Press C for circle select. We will be using this tool a lot. This large and sprawling face illustrates how careful you have to be to keep the right vertices in, and wrong vertices out, especially around the welding joints. Before pressing that F button, double check everything. Make sure the markers are deselected before creating a face. Continue until the entire geometry, except the through holes, is tiled with faces. Switch back to the solid mode by pressing Z.
Now it is finally time to delete all our markers. Before going any further, we need to make sure we have not made any mistakes while modeling our faces. The best way to do this is to extrude the entire geometry upwards, and test the resultant 3D model for non-manifold areas. Select everything and extrude along the Z-axis by an arbitrary amount. Press Shift-N to fix the normals. Switch to the wireframe mode, and deselect everything. From the Select menu, choose Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. Two faces are highlighted. We apparently did not delete two of our markers after all. After extrusion, these markers became stray faces. They can simply be deleted. A second non-manifold test succeeds. Now that the problems with our model have been identified and fixed, we can go back to the flat geometry by deleting all the top vertices. Press Z, to switch back to the solid mode. The last step is the quickest and easiest. Through a sequence of incremental extrusions, we will turn our flat geometry into a 3D model. We will use this side view drawing as our guide. Let's model the top half first. Select everything and extrude along the z-axis by 5. Switch to the face select mode. Deselect the two recess faces. Perform another extrusion by 5. Select the faces for circle number 3. Extrude by 1. Select the faces for circle number 2. Extrude by 10. Select all faces of circle number 1. Zoom in, and make sure every thin face is selected. If even a single small face is left unselected, the final model will not pass the manifold test. Extrude by 6. Select all faces of circle number 1, except those of the round recess with 7 holes. Extrude by 4. Switch to the vertex select mode. Select the bottom contour of the first recess. Create a bevel of the radius 2 by pressing Ctrl B, then 2. Enter 20 for the number of segments. Perform the same operation for the second recess. Switch to the wireframe mode. Select the bottom of the model and delete faces. Make sure the 3D cursor is in the origin. Create a mirror image by pressing Shift D, S, Z, minus 1, then Enter. Select everything. From the Mesh menu, select Cleanup, Merge by Distance, to remove the duplicate vertices. Press Shift N to fix the normals. Deselect everything. Perform the manifold test. Nothing is highlighted, therefore we are done. Switch back to the solid mode, and exit the edit mode. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.